if somebody goes, oh my God, you got to use this. It's the best. I'm like, well, is it, am I going to notice, you know, cause I've been doing like the first mic we ever used was called an AT2020, which is what we did. Ocean Eyes and a couple of our other songs on it. It's like $80. So when we get to something like How It Ends, where did this start? So let's break it down. So we have this drum loop. I think that's on a synth called... Of a, uh, it's either an M-Audio Venom or it's a Prophet X. And I'm leaning toward it being an M-Audio Venom. Um, but anyway, I have a couple of synths in my studio now that are, I'm a big sort of advocate for not, uh, you know, not buying a bunch of expensive gear. You can make stuff with great stock plugins from Logic or Ableton. Um, but I do find that it is inspiring once you've made hundreds of songs with those things to get something that you don't fully understand and that's brand new. So the M Audio Venom is a, basically like a discontinued like toy synth that I got on eBay for some nominal amount of money. And it had this, it felt very kind of like disco-y to me. And over top of that, I layered a thing that I am fairly certain is a uh, Prophet X patch, which was this kind of... That sounded like, it's a synth patch, but it sounded almost like sort of like seagulls or something. Mm. Conjures a completely different world to the one that you end up with. Yeah, but it but it really is under the whole mm. song. That really was the foundation of everything. And over top of that, I played sort of an organ patch, which has no rhythm. It's very soft, but it's chordal, and so it's the thing that has kind of a tonal chordal bass happening. And so those chords alone probably were the, the baseline for writing lyrics, um, which is kind of often the, uh, often the case for me. What was the point of all of those migraines? You can hear a little bit of the bleed of the drums so short, in the headphones. Don't spend it my way. I think there's also a track, which is a Farfisa plugin which is very distorted. Um, I love the sound of a... Here, let me play a little louder. This is buried really far down. But that's what it sounds like when it's loud. That's sitting below everything else. Um, but all together that makes up this. All of those migraines. And when you do that vocal, is that yeah. the finished vocal? Or is that, uh, do, do you just improvise words or do you write them out first? Or, no. Great question. On this song, the first thing I did, which got uh, thrown away, I don't think I could pull it up, unfortunately. Um, but I did one scratch take of a vocal while I was writing it. I think... I could be totally wrong. I want to say it was like into a vocoder mic, which is like a little crappy mic attached to a, synth a synthesizer called a, a um, Ultra Nova by Novation. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, something to get the, the sort of, you know, the melody lyric across without being precious about takes. Um, if I pull up like the take list, yeah, there's about like 16 takes of that verse that I then comp together um, and process and do a little tuning. I've sort of never, I've never really tuned Billy's vocals because she's such a good singer, but I have to tune mine all the time. Right, yeah, right. I'm not as, not as good. Over top of that, I layered some harmonies as the verse moved into the second half. Try to avoid a pointless time change. Just a little octave up. Kept it really quiet. A pointless time And how do you process your vocals then? I, I do very little processing on the harmonies. There's uh, nothing. They're completely dry. Um, 
Yeah, there's nothing on the harmonies. They're running uh, in my studio through a CL1B, that sort of classic blue compressor unit that's probably somewhere in this room, although I haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, the, the sort of like, you know, the the most standard uh, compressor. But that's a new thing for me. Also, I, I used to use just the Logic compressor plugin, but I, uh, I've started running it through that. Uh, I, yeah. And do, do you have a favorite mic or, or do, do you always use the same I use mic? A, for... I, yeah, I've spent a lo many years using a, a TLM 103 Neumann microphone, which is still what I have on the road. So I still do a lot of recording on it. Uh, I think that mic's awesome. At home, I have a, I use a Chandler Red on my own voice and on a lot of other people. And then Billy sings into a Telefunken 251 at home, which I think sounds awesome on her. We sort of, before we started making her second album and then my first album after that, we did a whole sort of like, we had some downtime and did like real like shootouts, microphone shootouts, which we'd never done in our lives, but right. we had the time and it was fun. And that was the one that she thought sounded the most exciting on her voice. And I liked the Chandler Red too. Yeah. So that was what we landed on. Yeah, and great idea, and great that you had the time to do that because yeah. that, that ends up saving time in, totally. the, in the long run. Well, and I also sort of, again, like maybe by accident, I've always been kind of a stickler for sort of not, like I don't, it's hard for me to believe the hype about things, you know? If somebody goes, oh my God, you got to use this, it's the best. I'm like, well, is it, am I going to notice, you know? Because I've been doing, like the first mic we ever used was called an AT2020, which was what we did, Ocean Eyes and a couple of our other songs on it. It was like $80. And... You know, I always had a feeling of like, the mic sounds fine. And it was like a little noisier than I like. I don't like a, a high noise floor. I can't really stand the sure SM7 microphone because even with a cloud lifter, it's too, there's too much, like it just sounds like that. And I like, I like real silence in between words. Ooh. 